all right what is going on guys it's joey Your limit and in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys uh ways and techniques on how to grow your portfolio this is specifically on behance but you can add some of these features if you guys have a carbon made i don't know if anyone still uses that uh maybe i don't really know any other portfolio sites i mainly stick to uh behance besides using carbon made like four or five years ago but other than that, let's get right into the video. So before we really jump into the points, uh, I just wanted to apologize. I don't know if you guys can hear the cars and stuff. I'm actually not in my house right now. I'm at my mom's. And yeah, so I don't know if that's loud. I don't know if it's not. Uh, I don't really care. So basically, the first point I'm going to make is thumbnails. For your Behance projects, I see uh, way too many people doing um, like custom thumbnails, kind of like more so a YouTube thumbnail where like it just ha it has text and like it, it looks cool. It really does make your portfolio, I guess, seem more together. It just makes it look professional, I guess, is what people think. But it's really downgrading uh, your work and pushing people away. People want to see an insight as to what they're going to click on. If you, I'll throw a picture up on the screen. If you go over to the Discover page on Behance, there's not a single one on there where you will see that template, you know, like YouTube thumbnail like um, cover for these projects. Almost 99% of the ones I'm looking at right now are actual stuff that you're going to see when you click on this basically you guys want to kind of stray away from that youtube thumbnail just text with a background and really choose a cool uh, like choose the best thing that's in your project that you were posting and use that as the screenshot because i'm telling you that is going to bring in so many more people and it's so underrated and i see way too many people do the typography thumbnails way too much so the second point is going to be quality over quantity and i know that is the most cliche thing in the world but it really is so crucial you don't want to fill up your portfolio with just everything you make you really want to choose your absolute best work that you've ever done and that may mean you're gonna have to go back sometimes and delete because that's i mean that's what i've done i've have i don't really delete um excuse me past projects i just make them drafts i unpublic size them is that the right word I don't know i make them private basically so i can still see them because i think it's kind of cool to see the progression that i've made um but i don't keep them public just because that's not my best work anymore i've grown as a designer in a whole and so keeping your portfolio up to date and perf um what's the word i'm looking for up to date yeah i guess, I guess it's just up to date but keeping your portfolio fresh fresh is what i was looking for is really going to bring in more views because when people see a project they click on your pro, uh your profile they don't want to see see a clutter and wave of just bad projects and they don't want to filter through the bad ones to find the good ones so if you make them all good it's going to bring in a lot more people all right now the third point i have is going to be uh use variety you really want to have variety in your work because if you don't um you're gonna you're gonna run stale and you're gonna hit a plateau in viewers that's really with any social media but more so bands if you're just posting social media headers advertisements same old same old it you're not gonna see any new people you want to you want to bring in more people you want to enlarge your audience not just keeping with the same social media headers that's gonna appeal to the same audience so uh like i'm doing now i'm doing album covers and more so motion design which we'll get into a little bit later um but yeah so i have i have social media collections so that's gonna be your headers i have rebrands i have mascot logos uh, ui design you want to appeal to as many people as you can because obviously if 
there's something in a portfolio for everyone to like, then they're more so going to click it, obviously. I said that last point was a little quick, but hopping right into the fourth one is what I was talking about uh, earlier, and that's motion design. Nobody is using... I, w- I shouldn't say nobody, but there is such a small percentage of people using motion design in portfolios, and it's just so important. It can bring in so many more people, and engagement, I promise you, will go up if you add even the most simple motion design. I know I'm sounding hypocritical because I have no motion design at the moment. In my drafts, I do because I'm still growing. I have a whole album covers collection where I show the album cover and then the motion design for the album cover. Um, that's just not public yet, but I'm I'm going to have it. So I know that's hypocritical, but I'm telling you, hop on the motion design trend. It you are going to, in the long run, you are going to thank yourself. And I promise it's going to help you grow no matter what. Even if it's... uh, I forget who I saw. Someone on Twitter, I forget who it was. They did a um, a movie poster. And they added motion to it just by doing a, a layer. I forget what they called it. But it was basically a video. And it was just layers being shown. So it kind of showed you how they made it. But it was adding motion to it the viewers were feeling like they could actually see the process they were more engaged in that post because motion people don't want to just look at a flat screen anymore well a flat screen they don't want to look at a still image is the right word so adding motion design is going to be crucial in your portfolio and i'm telling you guys hop on that trend before everyone hops on that trend all right, guys, so now the fifth and final tip is going to be comment on other people's portfolios and works. I promise you that's going to help. I know, again, that sounds cliche and overused, but it really does help. If you engage with other people, they're more so going to click on your stuff and return the favor. Um, and don't go spamming it. You don't want to be like, this is really dope. Check out my portfolio. That's you are going to be hated. I promise you, you are going to be hated. Do not do that. Make it personal. Make them feel welcome. Tell them, find something you like about their portfolio. Give some criticism. Make it personal to their template. Don't just copy and paste and do all that. That's actually probably going to drive people away. I know when I see those comments on my portfolio, I just completely ignore them. Um, and yeah, so I highly suggest dropping personal and engaging comments on other people's works and projects because then they are going to return the favor and everything like that. Okay, right, so that really wraps up this tip video. I know it was really quick and fast and some of the tips were kind of cliche, but I really hope you guys were able to take out. Uh, something, especially the thumbnails and motion design. I think those are two really, really, really important uh, details to add. But yeah, other than that, guys, uh, go follow all my social links in the description below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. I've been Joey Your Limit. Peace.